Okay. So, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, we are um, we're working on ITK Snap 3.0, and it's um, it's being funded by NIBIB with a grant with an R1 grant for software maintenance and development, and these are the specific aims of this grant. So one is to uh, implement automatic segmentation for a wider range of uh, problems, in particular multi-component and multi-modality data, so that you can apply this kind of automatic segmentation that Allison showed you to uh, color data, for example, uh, if you have uh, you know, color images or diffusion tensor data that's multi-component or even time-varying data. Um, Implement texture-based segmentation, so again for ultrasound data that can be quite useful. Um, right now there's no support for um, using image texture to guide segmentation. Um, another feature that it should have is, is, is scaffolding kind of features. So John, uh, during the manual segmentation talk, alluded to this, that um, sometimes you can, it's useful if you want to segment something, let's say you're segmenting the liver. I might segment it from this direction, and I might segment it from this direction, and I might segment it from this direction, and I kind of get a three-dimensional structure of what it should look like, but I only do a couple slices in each orientation, and from those, so maybe there's two slices like this, two slices like this, and two slices like this that I trace by hand. From that, I can get kind of an idea of what the sh overall three-dimensional shape is. You can get some kind of very rough model fitted to that. And then the idea is to use those models to constrain your segmentation so that by doing some scaffolding you can then constrain your automatic segmentation to sort of adhere to that scaffold. Um, the other aim, the second aim is to improve performance on large image volumes. So right now SNAP doesn't do too well uh, if your volumes are above 512 by 512 by 512 um, because it's kind of it uses more memory than it absolutely has to, and so we can do some smart compression to reduce the memory use. Um, and then a, a big one is to improve the user interface by porting to a more modern GUI toolkit, which is called QT4. Um, and also then we have some validation and training and outreach aims, which is part of the reason we're doing this workshop. Um, the anticipated release is late this year. So a lot of this, uh, a lot of the work towards the new release is done, but uh, there's some small but important pieces missing, like a lot of shortcuts, a lot of saving capability. So a lot of boring stuff to program, but it's very necessary to use the tool. Um, so what will be included in this release is um, input and output for multi-component image data, better visualization of multi-component images, uh, with multiple overlays, um, and then automatic segmentation of uh, multiple layers and multi-component images, a new user interface, and somewhat improved support for DICOM data. Um, so with that, I'll just I'll do a quick demo of the new program as it is, if I can find it here. Okay, so one thing you notice differently, the user interface looks a little bit different here. When you start up the program, you get like a visual list of recent images that you've loaded. Um, but a lot of the a lot of the functionality is similar. So let me find something. Okay, so I'll go back to the data set that we had before, this tumor data set. Um, so the, the overall program is not going to be too different. I think if you get familiar with the current version, it'll be pretty quick to switch over to the new version. One thing that's a little bit different is that um, these tool options are a little bit laid out a little bit differently, and there's some more 
options available. Um, but the support for multiple layers is much, much better. So if I um, now add an overlay, um, why did it keep going there? If I add an overlay of like a flare image, for example, um, you can see that I, I on my main screen I already have the list of different overlays, and what I can do is instead of placing them on top of each other like the current version does, I can actually display these overlays side by side. So when you're working with a lot of uh, image layers, that, that can become uh, pretty useful. So I can keep on loading overlays. And eventually, we're going to add some kind of project functionality so that you don't have to load up four images by hand, but you just load a whole project. Um, but yeah, so you can see these different image layers um, instead of being stacked on top of each other with transparency, just side by side. Um, another thing we were able to do in this version is to load images that are multi-component images. So if I'm able to find one of those, um, that's not okay. So I'm going to load a six component tensor data set. So here, if you can see, it says the number of components per voxel is six. And that's something that the current version of Snap just cannot handle. And um, the layer inspector is a little bit also um, a little bit bigger than the current version. And one thing we can do is assign nicknames to layers just kind of useful when you're working with a lot of data. But uh, one thing we have here is I can now show select components from this image. So this is a tensor image. It's a six component diffusion tensor image and I can flip through those components. Um, there's an animated button. The animate button doesn't do anything yet but eventually will allow you to kind of have it animate through the components which could be useful for a time sequence image. This could be also a time sequence image. And um, not only can I look at single components, but I can do things like look at the magnitude of all the components, or I can look at the maximum component um, and kind of on, on the fly. So, um, and this is all there to sort of support a um, segmentation of this high resolution data. I can mix multi-component data with overlays as well, so I can go here and I have a tensor image but I also have a RGB image or a, yeah here's my RGB image so I can show them side by side I can go to my um, inspector here and tell my RGB image to display it as it to use the RGB display so now I can have it side by side um, Yeah. So the dynamic data would look kind of like the, the tensor image. Yeah, so, in, so instead of, um, unfortunately, I don't have any to show you, but you would. It's D, D, A, D, D, D. Yeah. Oh, OK. Too many, too much stuff. Sorry about that. But you would, you would you just go through the component. It would just flip through, through the time points. Um, we still have color maps and stuff like that. So let me um, show you the segmentation capability here. Let me just load all my overlays. Um, so again, I have. Um, I have four overlays. Um, you know why the color map here has changed. So switch their gray color map. Um, so the contrast adjustment is very similar too. Um, okay, so now what I can do, what I couldn't do before, is do automatic segmentation on these uh, four images at the same time. 
So if I'm interested in the tumor, I can go and so draw a box and go ahead and do segment. And um, oh, this is oh, 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 this is an old version, isn't it? Ay, ay, ay. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> I, I ran something that's kind of old. Um, give me one second. This is QT based now. Yeah, so it was. The earlier FLTK will be here. FLTK is, is. The future of FLTK is not very clear. So FLTK, this. ITK Snap is currently based on a toolkit called FLTK, and we don't know how much longer it's going to be around, where QT is much more commercially used. Okay, so now I'm actually running the latest version which is what I wanted to do. Okay. Okay, so there I go to do my segmentation. There my four layers are. And now I can still do thresholding like we did before. And then I can just choose which one of the layers and which one of the components I want to do thresholding on. But more interestingly, I can do clustering. So this is a more automated approach. So I can say how many clusters I think there are in this data, maybe four. And it'll give, it's going to give me a, some kind of a initialization for the speed image. And then I can run a clustering algorithm that is going to fit uh, basically fit Gaussian distributions to um, this multidimensional data. So what you see at the bottom, we can look at the different components here, and uh, we can see there are different color uh, Gaussians that are being fitted to them. And so, so basically the image has been partitioned into four different tissue classes. Um, and now I can take one of these, if I'm happy with it, I can take one of these tissue classes and use it as a speed image for my automatic segmentation. Uh, if I'm not happy, I could reinitialize and, and do this again. So it's not, like in this case, I'm actually not very happy because the tumor and edema in this image got all lumped together into the same cluster. So I might, maybe I'll add another, um, I'll, I'll multiply them, I'll increase the number of clusters and try again. And this time around, I got something that's more focusing on the tumor. And so now I can go and do similar to what we were doing with Allison, place my bubbles, and perform segmentation. So this is something that the current version doesn't support because it's using data from all four uh, different images rather than just a single image layer. Um, so that's that's kind of the main the main functionality. But a lot of the little bits and pieces are are still missing. But there's some nice little user features like for example you don't have to go to another window to see what the intensity under the cursor is. And you can see on the left here the intensity for each of the image layers right under the cursor. Um, the zooming is a little bit improved. Like if I lost my cursor, I can say center on the cursor. That's very helpful. Um, label selection is a little bit easier, too. There's quick label selection buttons and so on. Um, anyway, so we're working to get this ready for you as quickly as possible and uh, hopefully by the end of the year it'll be available. Okay, so if you are interested in this uh, version of SNAP, um, you can already start using it. So it is, it's, you know, it's good for kind of day-to-day uh, -day 
uh, casual use, if you're doing a lot of segmentation and you need something that's going to not crash too much, I wouldn't recommend it yet. Um, but as an image viewer, it's definitely uh, good enough to use. Um, and so there's a link where you can get it. And um, if you want to hear about the official release, just sign up for our users group on itksnap.org. So anyway, closing closing thoughts. Just hopefully you can use it and find it not too frustrating. And um, if you have questions uh, about it, um, there's some information on the website that is going to be complementary to what we talked about today. I, I realize the class ended up being more fast-paced than I had hoped, even though it was a full-day class. Um, but and there's also a users list, so that um, questions tend to get answered within a couple of days. Again, I want to acknowledge the funding, and that's it. We're done. Thank you. Thank everybody who put in a lot of time to prepare these parts of the course.